Marshall, I saw an interesting uh, uh, thing yesterday about uh, how doctors have kind of been forced to do video diagnosis and how they love it and they didn't think they would and they, they feel like they're like entirely more efficient and they're just, it's, it, it blew me away because they're just talking about how it's, it could be the future of medicine in a very yeah. positive way, not just yeah. a cost cutting way, but the doctor's like, Hey, I can serve more people. You know, any, what, what are you hearing about that or thoughts on that? I mean, telehealth has been like a big thing out here on the West Coast um, for a while. I mean, I think like I um, have limited my in-person doctor's visits for years now because One Medical and some of these other companies that I use, um, you just FaceTime with somebody, they can fulfill prescriptions remote. Um, you know, it's unless you're like really, really sick or have a problem that you have to get an in-person test for. Like, I don't really want to take the time to go do that. Um, and, you know, one, so One Medical is basically like... Um, I, you pay like a subscription fee or your employer pays your fee for it. And instead of going like to some random old doctor and like a plate like they've been going to your whole life, you can go to like any of the do these facilities in, in your city. Um, you don't have like just one doctor. So I have like a place that's, you know, half a mile from my house, but if I'm on the other side of town, I can also go there. Um, and it's just like a self-service model. So I've been doing that for a long time. Uh, but there's companies, there's a company called Forward that launched a few years ago called Forward Health in San Francisco. And every, they've kind of reimagined like the doctor's office and, and really like um, preventative health, or, yeah, pre preventative health uh, in general. So when you go to a visit there, um, everything that you talk about in the, with doctors like recorded by a, a basically an AI robot and they transcript, they like write a transcript of the session and they take notes of everything that you say. Um, and then they give you like a Fitbit and they give you a Bluetooth scale and they give you a blood pressure monitor and they give you all these connected devices and they actually take those inputs in through their app. So instead of like you just having all this stuff that you use on your own, they're actually using that data from like the health app on your phone and your Fitbit to inform health decisions for you. The guy who started it um, actually like he had done his 23andMe, um, you know, genetic history and predispositions to diseases and he took it to the doctor his family had been using and he'd been using since he was a kid and it was like some old school guy keeping records on paper and the doctor was like cool like I don't know what you want me to do with this um I'm not really sure how that like I, I'm I, I'm not like equipped to handle that and the, and the guy was like this seems weird that I can find this information about these diseases that like I'm susceptible to or that I'm like you know a, a carrier for but that my doctor is not at the level to help me like use that information um so that, like there's some interesting things like that that are it's basically like star trek man you go in there and you stand on this platform you like put your hand on this thing and it measures your height and your weight and it shoots all these lasers at you and it measures your like blood oxygen level and your like pulse and stuff in like 10 seconds it's really wild um and then like there's an app where it tracks everything i think you'll start to see a lot of that stuff go down like mainstream where it's not a super expensive luxury thing it's more of like what everybody's using it was interesting to me, um, Erica said yesterday, you know, with her third graders doing e-learning, she made the comment, they don't really know how to use a mouse. And this is not on the topic that we are on right now, but it kind of blew me away. I was like, wow. Like, how is, what is the future of the interaction between the user and the, the computer, if you will? Nobody knows. What, well, what do I, what do I hope for? Or like, what, yeah, what are you, I mean? what are you hoping for? So, I mean, it, Elon Musk is trying to solve, who uh, does Tesla, uh, is trying to solve this problem with a company called Neuralink, where basically it implants like computers in everyone's brain, uh, and then your brain's connected to the internet, and then you can access all information that you want at the same time, uh, all the time. Um, that's a pretty far out thing, but like, I, I, it's not like, it, it's not that crazy like it's actually a thing that we can do um i think more short-term versions of that um there's a really cool company called control labs um ctrl labs if you're interested that's building um technology where you can um it's like a bracelet that you wear that allows you to think about what you want to do with your hand and then it does that for you um so you actually you know, it's not like a chip implanted in you or any kind of weird thing like that it's literally just like a, a thing you a bracelet thing you wear um and the the demo they gave is like someone playing galaga or one of those like old school space games where the guy just has his hand sitting on a table and he's thinking about how he would be moving the controller um and like as he's thinking about like clicking or moving his 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 fingers 
the brain synapses are firing before the muscle actually moves and the bracelet picks up the brain synapses firing and then moves the car the thing on the screen in the way that he would have done it if he was like actually clicking um so then like in theory you can control your computer you could control things in your house just by thinking about it um which is kind of crazy but uh the science like is is there and the people that are behind it are incredibly incredibly smart uh, and well funded so um you know I, look i think we're still a ways away from some of that stuff people are talking about like oh we should have flying cars by now and uh driverless cars like uber had a big driverless cars initiative that's a lot further away than people think i think we'll have flying cars before we have autonomous driving cars uh in scale but some of this like weird you know interesting interactive technology is far closer from like a future perspective than you know some of these other things that we all thought we'd have by now.